What's up developers, it's Dari here and I hope that you're having a great day since we're going to talk about Flexbox in Tailwind. Before we continue on with the video, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon where you can get access to my private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with their coding issues. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. In the last video, we touched on Grid and I thought I'd make a separate video on Flexbox even though you might think that the idea behind it is pretty much the same. And to be honest, it kind of is, but a huge difference is the fact that Grid layout is two-dimensional and Flexbox is one-dimensional. Whenever you are in a dubio on which one to use, keep in mind that Flexbox has a better way of dealing with sizes of elements. It can also be nested, which means that you can start with a Flexbox row but elements inside the row could be flexbox columns. As you can see, I've added two headers on my page. The first one is the grid section, and the second one is for my flexbox. And that's what I want to do right now. And that's what I want to do right now. I want to start off with a layout, and then I want to move on to adding flexbox. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Right below our H2, which you probably don't have, but recreate it. Let's create a div, which will be our parent element. In here, let's create another div with a class of bg-red-500. Let's make the text white and let's give it a height of 26. Inside the div, let's create a paragraph with a text of flex item one. What I want to do right now is to duplicate it twice. So let's do that. All right. The second one has a background color of blue. It's flex item number two. The third one has a color of yellow and it's flex item number three. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, you can see that our divs got printed out vertically, so right below each other. And this is all right because we haven't applied Flexbox to it. We got to go back to Visual Studio Code, scroll up to our parent element right here. Let's apply a class to it called Flex. With this, another class is pretty important, which is wrapping your flex. By default, a flex box is not wrapped, which is the class of flex-no-wrap. But what you do want to do is to set your flex equal to wrap, so just like this. This will make sure that your row container will automatically move items to the next row if the item would overflow the main axis of the container. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, you can see that our flex items have been aligned horizontally right now. This is what the foundation is of Flexbox, the directions. Right now it is horizontally, but you can obviously set it back to vertically. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code and let's add a class to it of flex call Save it, go back to Brave, and as you can see, the output has indeed been changed. Another cool thing is the fact that you can reverse the values. So right now it's the order that we want to see, one, two, three. But let's say that we want to start off with three. Instead of copy pasting and reordering it, we could basically say, well, we have a class called flex-cool-reverse. If we save it, navigate back to the browser, you can see that the first item that we have is flex item three, then two, and then one. The next topic is actually a pretty fun one, which is the orders with flex, since you can't specifically order your elements. To showcase you this in the best possible way, I'd like to navigate back to Tailwind's website, and let's search for order. In here, you can see 12 classes that you can use, which is the same exact number as the grid and flex columns and rows that you can define. By adding one of these classes, you can determine which element should be first, second, third, and so on. Now besides the 12 default classes, you've got three more classes. The first one is order-first, which will be the first element that will be shown. Then we got order-last, which will be the last element. And order-none is this one right here, is basically none. You might wonder when you will be using these orders, since you can easily change up the order yourself. Whenever you want your main content to come before the other elements in the source order, but you still display it correctly, you'll be using this. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. And before we can apply this to our class, we need to remove flex call reverse. What we could do next is to basically say that our flex item 2 
as a order dash one. So it's the first item. Let's say that flex item one is order dash two. And let's say that the last one is order dash three, which it already is. Save it, navigate back to the browser. Let's go to our local host. And as you can see, flex item two comes first, then one and then three. Right now, the output is still not the same as what we did before with grid, since the elements are full width and placed next to each other. This can be done with the grow and shrink method in Flexbox. There are two classes that you can use in order to let a flex item fill in the available space. The first one is flex-grow-0. This makes sure that your item can't grow. Now besides that, you can use another function. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And let's actually remove our orders first, because it will be annoying. All right. Now inside our flex item number one, let's add a flex dash auto class. If we save it, navigate back to Brave, you can see that flex item one took all the space that was available next to the size of flex item two and three. Now if we add the same class to our flex dash two, so flex dash auto, Save it, refresh it. You can see that the available space has been divided between flex item one and flex item two. The same exact thing can be done to shrink a flex item. This would decrease the size of an element. I'm not going over it since it's exactly the same way as growing an element. Our flex items are allied next to each other. You can add spacing right here in the same exact way as adding spacing to grid items. Let's double check that. Let's go back to Tailwind. Let's search for a gap. You can see that gap is a utilities for controlling gutters between grid and flexbox items. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's go up to our parent element and let's say gap-4. And we could basically say that we want to set the height to full. Save it, go back to Brave, localhost. And as you can see, we have three items right here with spacing. This was it for this video where I showed you the basics of Flexbox and Tailwind. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.